So today, I want to talk to you about one of the most important questions you could ever ask yourself. Why? This is the big why. The big why. You guys remember being children. All right, we're going to regress. Some of you have to regress less than others. <laughs> remember being children. And I know every person in this room has been guilty of this. You did something wrong, and you may not even have realized that it was wrong until the moment your parents asked you the all-important question, why did you do that? And what's the response? I don't know. My kids still know that one. I don't know. Why did you do that? Sucko! Why did you put that frog in your sister's pocket? I don't know. Toa, why did you dig that huge hole in the backyard? And what happened to all the dirt? <laughs> Luna, why did you hit your brother in the face with that baseball bat? <laughs> it was an accident. Toa's defending his sister. He's awesome. The answer is always, I don't know. My parents, being the brilliant people that they are, just like, just like us. When I was little, they bought us, uh, they bought me a ink pad. And they bought me stamp, stamps. And uh, I stamped every single book in the house. <laughs> Why'd you do that, Matt? I don't know. Isn't that what you do with an ink pad? <laughs> the next thing I did was I put my hand in it and I marked all the walls of the house. It just escalated from there until they finally got, had a revelation and got rid of my ink pad. <laughs> why? Why? You know, when you ask someone why and they respond with, I don't know, that's not usually the case. People know why they do things. They just don't want to think about them. Because if we think about why we're doing things, it also brings up another point. Motivation. Motivation. It's all in the stance. <laughs> it makes this thing work. Motivation. Why? It brings up motivation. And part of that word motivation that we talk about is the word motivate. Motivate. And when we start talking about the word motivate, we bring it down a little bit more and we ask the question, what moved you to do that? That's really what we're asking when we get to why. Why? Why are you here today? Why am I standing up here talking to y'all? Why did I wake up this morning? Why do you work in the job that you're working in? Why did you sit next to the person you're sitting next to this morning? Why? That's the big question. And most of the time, we want to spend our lives avoiding that question, actually. We think we're very big. We think we're too busy think we've got this going on and this going on. I don't have time for that. Why? Why? All right. Whoops. I, let's go. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Toa. I should let you run this. The other day I watched a video. You guys may have already seen this. Any of you guys watch TED Talks? I got this from Larry Lyon sitting back here. Wave at everybody, Larry. There you go. That's a beautiful wave. Larry Lyons, he's my supplier. <laughs> he's always sending me new and interesting things to check out. If you've never heard TED Talks, they're really simple, maybe 15, 20 minutes, full of all kinds of stuff. It's like Mars Hill uh, in biblical times where people would stand and, and bring all their great ideas. Well, this one in particular, Simon Sinek, I think that's how you pronounce it, I could be totally wrong, he is talking about uh, leadership, actually. And... In his talk, he has this one point behind me. It's called the golden rule. The golden rule. And in the golden rule, again, he's mostly talking about business. But when you talk about the what, you're talking about the product. You have the why, the how, that's how you make the product. And the why, why are you creating the product? And most of the time, businesses, and this is most of the time in our personal lives, we get very focused on the what's. And we don't want to think so much about the whys. And if we do think about them, we don't really want to communicate the whys. Now, he brought up Apple. 
There are amazing electronics companies all around the world, right? And many of them produce better quality products than Apple does. If you just got a little bit, you're part of the Apple cult. I'm sorry. <laughs> but Apple did something different. There may be companies that made a more amazing phone, a more amazing music device, but they just wanted to talk about their device and all the great things that it could do. You need to buy this. Why? Because it's an incredible device. Apple did something completely different. They rewound and went all the way to the why. And they told you why you needed this. Why? Where is this thing coming from? They connected with our hearts. When you start, talk to the why, when you start thinking about the why, when you start talking about the motivations, it's going to take you right back to the heart. Apple discovered that. And so they got hold of your heart. Now they can make anything they want to, and you'll spend more on a little device than you will on a big screen TV because it has an Apple logo on it. They got your heart. The what doesn't even matter anymore. The why is very important. Have any of you guys had a conversation with a child? Yeah? Well, if you know, they never end. <laughs> they never stop. Why? Do, 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 do. Why? Do, 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 do. Why? Do, 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 do. Why? It keeps going and going and going. Why is that? Because children are building the basic foundation of their world. The very elementary principles. They're trying to get down to the very bottom line. We as adults don't want to go there. We don't want to think about that. But children are building their basic understanding of the world. So they're going to keep asking why. You guys, I want to ask you to do something today. Will you regress with me? Will you step back and be children for a moment? Let's go backwards just a little bit, but I'll give you one more example on this golden circle. You want a big house, or you have a big house. How did you get that house? You worked really hard and earned a lot of money and spent it on that house. Why? Now we're talking about motivation. Well, I deserve it. Oh, why? Huh? One why leads to another why leads to another why. Just like having a conversation with a child. Because we are supposed to also be children, aren't we? Let's look at this scripture together, guys. Jesus called a little child to himself. Set him in the midst of them. And said, assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted... Dynamic change, that's what that word means. Unless you have dynamic change in your life and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Have you ever read the book Little Prince? I love that book. It's profound. I have a copy for myself and I bought one for my kids. The whole line of The Little Prince is about this child who travels throughout space and he meets all kinds of different people, but he's asking one question after another question after another question. He runs into the businessman that you see behind me and he wants to ask him questions, but he's far too busy. He's far too important. He's busy counting stars. How important is that? I don't know. It was obviously very important to him. But that's the same way that we are here in this room as adults. We don't want to ask the important questions because we think we're too busy. We're too big. We're, are, we become too self-important. We have to be children again, friends. Let's be children again. Let's start asking those important questions. Let's get back. For God so loved the world. You guys know this scripture? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, welcome to preschool. Let's take it apart. The what? 
is eternal life. That is a good product. <laughs> doesn't get any better than that, does it? Can you imagine life forever, abundance, goodness, and the love, the presence of God? A God that cares for you and made you with great intentions and plans? Perfection? Wow. You're probably thinking right now, I want that. You should. That is a great product. How did God provide that product? He gave Jesus. He gave Jesus Christ to come and die for us, to take all of our sin, all the judgment that was on us for the things that we've done in this life, and he stripped it away by the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. And then Jesus rose from the dead and provided us with new life. Now, most of us stop there. I want that. I'll take this. But guys, let's go back another step. Why did God do this? Why was all of this provided? Why does he want you to have eternal life? Why is that? Because he loves you. This is the big why. This is the answer to the greatest questions ever asked. If you ask why, 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 like a child does, it's going to lead you back to the greatest question in all the universe. Why? Because God is love. Because God loves you. Why did this universe begin? God is love. Why were you made? God is love. Why did you wake up this morning? Because God loves you. Why do you have breath in your lungs? Because God loves you. Why is my wife still married to me? <laughs> because God loves me. <laughs> and he likes to operate in his love through her. God is love. Let's look at another scripture together. This is 1 John 4. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not, he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation. That's a long word, but what it means is the judgment that we deserved, he stripped it all away. He provided complete forgiveness. We are no longer held guilty and accountable for our sins. That's what that word means. And then lastly in that scripture, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. At this point, we can nod. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. I understand that. We can get it up here, but how many of you know there's a difference between getting it up here and getting it right here? When we get it right here, our entire world has changed. Everything has changed because this is our heart. This is where the big why goes, right here. We can go like this, but it's here that the difference is made. God is love. Here's another example real quick. In, the, in this slide, you guys see love, discipleship, service. Often we get our eyes on the service. We get our eyes on the, the to-dos, the things we need to do. We do the do's. But it's all empty if it doesn't come out of love, the center. Love motivates discipleship, the how, the process. 
like Pastor, Pastor Ben talked about. We've got a process in place, and that process will help us in amazing ways. But it's all empty if it doesn't begin with love. Love motivates the process, motivates service. When we talk about service, we can talk about the hands. You want the heart before you have the hands. You guys, we all go to work, right? We all do different things. We do things every day that we don't want to do. We do things because we're told to do them. We do them because we know we're supposed to do them. The world is dramatically changed. Our personal lives are dramatically changed, and the relationships around us are dramatically changed when the motivation of what our hands are doing comes from in here. So I want to encourage you. Let's look at this. This is Revelations 2. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered, and have patience, and have labored for my name's sake, and have not become weary. This looks great, right? This is the model church right here. The model life. This is it. Doing all the right things. You, you can go to so many different churches in the Metroplex. Wonderful churches. And we'll tell you what's right, what's wrong. We'll tell you, well, that's scriptural. That's not scriptural. That's a great church. We do wonderful things. Yesterday, we had a wonderful time right here, providing 20,000 meals for hungry people. Awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. And there are a lot of other people doing wonderful things. In your life, you may be a really good person. But this is not what God's looking for. Let's take another step forward, continuing the scripture. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent, that means turn around and do the first works or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Wow, okay. You, lampstand, when, when scripture talks about lampstand, it's talking about the presence of God, the power of God, the life of God. When we forget our first love, Jesus leaves the building. It's very important that we remember our first love. It's very important that we remember our first love. It's very important that we remember our first love. Those of you that have experienced the love of God, I want to challenge you to remember that moment. Remember that moment when you met him. I don't know how many times we've prayed for people and they've said, I feel lighter. Why is that? Because the guilt and condemnation of sin has been lifted off of them. There's an actual experience that happens. That's a first love experience. There's power when we get back to this place. Psalm 127 says, Unless the Lord builds the house... They labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stands, stay, stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. Working 80 hours, pointless. Making $500,000 a year, pointless. Making $30,000 a year, pointless. Volunteering at church, pointless. Our lives are empty and pointless if God's not in it. If God's not in it. But if he's there, Scripture also teaches us that true love casts out all fear. That's how he provides rest and sleep. Because we no longer have any fear when we step into his love. 
When we realize how much he loves us, we realize, whoa, he's got everything figured out. He's got a plan for your life. He has a destiny for your life. He has good things in store for you. And we trust him and begin to walk in it. Remember your first love. Remember from where you came from. Remember the moment that you first met Jesus. You know why, why I wake up in the morning? Because he loves me. And I can't help, when I'm standing up here worshiping God during the music, I can't help but be reminded of where he's taken me from. Do you remember where you were? For me, I'll just tell you a little bit about me. I know you look up, look up here and think, wow, that's a, that's a nice white boy. <laughs> I can say that because I'm married to a Japanese woman. I forget I'm, I'm a white boy sometimes. <laughs> He's clean cut. <laughs> he probably grew up in a household of clean cut folk. <laughs> well, you know what? I spent most of my life pushing God away, pushing people away. I was a hateful, ugly person. The people that hung out with me, the reason they hung out with me, because they were just waiting to see who I would cut down, who I would hurt. They wanted to see the terrible thing that would come out of my mouth next. I did a lot of bad things, and I would push anybody away that tried to control me, or I even felt like they wanted to control me. I wanted my life to be what I wanted to do, when I wanted to do it, and I don't need you to tell me anything. And so what that did was I was constantly also looking for something to fill my life, and I became an alcoholic. I got caught up in drugs. I couldn't imagine a happy night where you, I wasn't sleeping with somebody. That's where that became the source of my life, and it was a very empty source. In, in, in my mid-20s, I... I'd saved up enough money, I quit my job, I sold a few things, and I moved out to Las Vegas. Because that's what you do. <laughs> huh? No? Oh, no? Okay. <laughs> well, any of you guys see that movie, Leaving Las Vegas? Yeah, it's not a super great movie or wonderfully romantic life, but for some reason, I thought... I'm going to go to Las Vegas, get myself a nice apartment, and party myself to death, because this whole thing ultimately is pointless. And so I was in Las Vegas doing that, and one night, I happened to be sitting in my apartment, and I had, I had a vision. I had a vision of me sitting in the bottom of a hole. That was the exclamation point on hole. I had a picture of me sitting at the bottom of a hole. It was a deep, dark, black hole. And I couldn't scratch up the sides. I couldn't make my way out. I was hopeless. I was miserable. I was empty. I was lifeless at the bottom of that hole. And I didn't know what to do anymore. But I looked up, and I saw the face of Jesus looking at me. He wasn't disappointed. That was the big shock. He wasn't looking at me going. All I saw on his face was love. All I saw was compassion. All I saw was his desire to be with me and do more and to do things and to live life, to walk together. The picture that we were given in the Garden of Eden of Adam walking in the garden with Father God, that's what he wants for each one of us to walk through this life hand in hand, doing this together. Why? Because God is love. And he loves us. And in that moment, at the bottom of that hole, I said, God, if you can do anything with what's left of this, take it. I'm sorry. Forgive me. And he reached into that hole and pulled me out. And can I tell you something? That was my first experience with love. That was my first love experience. And I, would, I have never been the same since. My life was radically changed. Now, was I perfect? No. Sako shakes her head. 
Am I perfect today? No. But I am not the person I was in the bottom of that hole. I encountered the love of God, and bam, something happened. The weight and the burden of sin, all the junk that really I'd spent my life piling on me, it was lifted off. And in that moment, I became a new creation, completely transformed, completely changed. I want you to remember. Remember. Remember your first love experience. It is the most valuable thing that you have in this life. And it's from that, when you wake up early in the morning, this is my 2016 challenge for you. 2016, every morning when you wake up, remember your first love experience. Remember where you were, remember your love experience, and where you are today. Let that be the big why of your life. Let that be the major motivator of your life. I guarantee that if you wake up in the morning and remember that, it will change the rest of your day. When I wake up in the morning and I think about Sako, and I think, ooh, I love that woman, it changes my interaction with her. I think, I might even kiss her. <laughs> and then Luna runs in the room, whoa! That's why we only have two children. <laughs> Remember your first love. And husbands and wives, when you wake up in the morning, Remember first your love, your first love experience with God, and let that motivate you to think about your husband or wife, and think about them, and think about what a gift from God they are, and your first love for them, and let that motivate your interaction with them. Remember. And those of you that have not had your first love experience, why wait another day? Today is your day. Today is your day to experience God and life in a way that you never have before. Today is the day that you have your first love experience with God that will change everything. The burden of sin completely lifted off of you. And it's not like it goes, oh, and then lets you move a little bit. It goes, oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. mm. He doesn't do that. He goes, Poof. it's not even collectible anymore. Today is your day. Your life can be changed forever if you can just today take hold of the big why. Why are you here today? God loves you. Why are you alive today? God loves you. What's in, for you, what's in store for you tomorrow? God loves you. Are we going to make it through this? God loves you. Would you guys stand up with me? We're going to bow our heads and pray. Usher, uh, not sorry, ushers us. If I have small group leaders, would you guys come up to the front real quick? And pastors, come on up to the front. <clears throat> We're going to pray. And I want to invite you today, while we're praying, I'm going to be praying for a little bit, so you guys can keep praying with me for a little bit. But I'm going to make two invitations today. While I'm praying, if you need a fresh touch of the love of God, I want you to come up, take hands with one of the people up here and let them pray for you. And I guarantee God is here right now, ready to love on you. And that's number one. Number two, if you've never experienced the love of God, I want you to come up here, take hands with somebody and pray with them and begin the rest of your life. Let's pray. Everyone bow your heads. Lord, thank you so much. Thank you for today. Thank you, God, for your loving kindness. Thank you, Lord, for your love that's inspired the universe. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, that you came to this earth. You suffered and you died for our sins, cleansing us completely. Thank you, Jesus, that you rose from the dead, fully empowered, and then sent the Holy Spirit to reside in us, powerful lives, inspired by your love, God. 
Lord, today I lift up every person in this congregation. Those of you, those of, that are here today that need a fresh touch of your love, they've experienced you in the past, but maybe they've forgotten or they've allowed it to get covered up by the world. Today, may it be a great day of reminder in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you are here today and you need a fresh touch, come on up. Lord, I pray that you would meet with people today, that there would be encouragement today. There would be encouragement today in the name of Jesus. If you need a fresh touch, come on up. Come on up. Come up here and pray with somebody. Thank you, Lord. 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 And today, if you have not had a first love experience, I want you to come up. Don't wait till tomorrow. This is the greatest moment of your life. Don't wait till tonight. Don't say I'm going to step out of here and go do this on my own. Join hands with someone and pray. Join a community of people that want to experience the love of God. Come up, come up, come up. Lord, thank you so much, God. Thank you so much. And I just speak grace over every person in the name of Jesus Christ, grace. Lord, and for every person here, when they leave today, they will remember your first love. When they're at their homes, they will remember first love. When they wake up in the morning, they will remember first love. In the name of Jesus Christ, and every day going forward, 2016 is going to be a year empowered by the love of God for Trinity Church. We're here because of your love, God. We're here because of your love, God. We're starting a third service because of your love. There are buildings going up all around us, people that are going to be asking the questions. We want to be here, Father. Bring them in and may they experience your love. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Again, we bless every person here in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.